Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, I was looking at those words as we were watching that clip. And uh, the words said, I, the words say that I am with you always. And, you know, <clears throat> I think, uh, you know, the enemy, he likes to use circumstances. He likes to use things to distract us, to get us to make, misplace our focus on what's going on around us and to get, to get us to forget about God. And, uh, you know, the Lord doesn't want that. Um, we want to go before the Lord with a word of prayer. Let's remember uh, those who are sick tonight who can't be here. Um, if everyone will, let's stand. Yes. Remember uh, John Kelly's daddy in prayer tonight as you pray. Ethel. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, and this privilege that you've given us to come and to be in your house tonight. Lord, Father, we thank you, Lord, for health and strength. Father, thank you, Lord, for your presence, God, and Lord, for all that you've done, Lord, and all that you continue to do, Lord. Father, we pray that you would just move, Lord, throughout this service tonight. We pray that Lord, you'd bless this time of worship, Father. We pray that you'd bless this time in the preaching of your word. Lord, we just lift up, Father, Lord John Kelly's dad to you tonight, God. And Lord, we just, Father, pray that you would do a supernatural work, Lord, in his life. That, Father, you would just heal his body, Lord, and touch his lungs, God. Lord, we lift up Angela to you tonight, Lord, as well, Father. That, God, you would just be with her, Lord, and that, God, you would just bless her with a, a safe and healthy delivery, Father. Lord, we just... Thank you, Lord, and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Laying up my treasures in that hole from above. Trusting fully, trusting in the Savior's love. Doing what I can for him.
Well, praise the Lord. It's good to be here on a Wednesday evening. I want to say to all of those who are unable to be here tonight, we are certainly looking forward to when you can get back in the house of God and we can get our lives back on track again. Uh, it looks like we've got a lot of work to do over the next little while. Uh, so, again, if you're unable to be here because of your sick, we are praying for you. If you're uncomfortable at this time, we're praying for you. But again, we do want to get our lives back on track because I don't think God ever meant for His people to view the church from a Facebook app. Uh, this is meant for people that are unable to be here and for people that are lost. That's the hope of it all. Not for people that are able-bodied to be in the Lord's house. So, uh, in saying that, we look forward to you being back here. Uh, if you have your Bible with you, turn with me to James chapter 4. Again, it's good to be here. It's been a beautiful day today. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about gone in a moment. Now, you're probably thinking I'm going to be preaching about the rapture of the church. I, I may allude to that, but that's not the heart of my message this evening. The heart of my message is opportunities that have been afforded to us are gone in a moment. I heard somebody say that you can never regain lost time. You can't. Go back and do something that you wished you would have done at a special time. So you can't regain lost time. You can't. I guess you can't make up for lost time. You can try to, you know, you know, smooth it over, ease the pain, but you never make up for lost time. Time lost is time gone. And so gone in a moment. The scripture says in James chapter 4 and verse 13. Go to now, ye that say, today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that passes or that appears for a time, a little time, and then vanishes away. Let's read that verse 14 one more time. Whereas you know not what shall be on the, mor the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time, and then it vanishes away. I remember telling probably this congregation this before, that driving down the road at the age of about 49, my mind was boggled. I couldn't understand how in the world I could be 49. I thought, I felt like I was 21, but I knew I was 49. And now, over the past few weeks, I have turned 55. Life, I know some of you folks are a whole lot older than I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm pointing that toward the back there because I heard somebody say something. But time passes, passes us by. And it passes us by in a hurry. You can be seated, by the way. I remember as a young person, I couldn't wait to get to a certain age in my life. I couldn't wait till I got 16. And it was sweet for me. I don't think men have sweet 16s. It's just sour 16. Because the older you get as a man, the more chores you have to do. But I couldn't wait to get 18. Because I knew when I turned 18, I could do whatever I wanted to do. At least that was my mindset. But I realized that if I was going to live under my dad's roof, I couldn't really do everything I wanted to do. Although I'd done a whole lot more. And I realized, you know, that even through life, you think as an adult you're going to be able to do what you want to do. But then you get married. And you realize you can no longer do. You had those couple of years where you thought you had some freedom. But then you get married and you cannot do what you want to do again. As a matter of fact, they say a happy wife, a happy life, or ever how they say that. So you spend the rest of your life, in essence, somewhat trying to make your wife happy. But you don't do what you want. Life is brief at best. 
It's very brief compared to eternity.